Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Tell Me Why. Last time we left off, we found out that Eddie was hiding some stuff for us and we explored the police station a little bit, and now we found out that he looked at our archive recently, like yesterday, and now we're gonna go and check in on the archive. See what information this potentially gives us. All right, so here. Please tell me you know what the code is. To the highly confidential police archive? Then how am I supposed to open the door? I spent hours playing next to this room. I'd see people go inside all the time. The keypad does this little tune. Dum da dee do. <laughs> Seriously? Go on, try. And I mean, it's obvious which ones it is. Dum da dum da dee do. Do. Da. The. So. Uh, what was da? I don't think that's the right order. So dumb. Da? No, that's do. Damn it. You're pressing the wrong numbers. Oops. Nope. You're pressing the wrong numbers. Ah, I'm not You're trying to press that numbers. one. I'm not trying to press that one. Okay, dumb. Are you da? No, you were D. So. You're pressing the wrong numbers. Six. Zero. Dum da D. Do. Yes. Here we go. We're in. I just kept accidentally pressing numbers because all the icons are kind of so close to each other. And I kept moving over just a bit too far and hitting like seven instead of six. Uh, looks like they're finally going digital. Oh, that's right. I remember Eddie complaining about this. They're gonna have to resort everything. Great. They've digitized their closed files, but only the ones before 1990. Meaning? Meaning our file is still somewhere in those boxes. Perfect. A room of scattered case files and a half-done sorting system. Yep. This is gonna be so fun for you. I'm gonna go keep a lookout. What? Why do I have to be the one stuck with box duty? Because if anyone sees me, I'll have a better excuse for being there. Reach out if you need anything. R68653. Look it up. Look it up, she says. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she's kind of right about that. That's what I was thinking, too. It would be way- it would make way more sense for Allison to be up there than Tyler. Alright, so we should probably... No, we can't look in the computer? Look. Uh... Let's see here. Closed files up to 1990 have been done. Remaining closed files in left corner. Page me if there's anything, Wilson. Textual materials with no images, textual materials, photographs, prints, video. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what was the, what was the number again? Allison, can you, can you remind me of that number? I seem to have forgotten it. I think it was... I know there was an R in it somewhere. Well, it's definitely not 2005. Oh wait, R. Right, R9. 20, 09. R05, 05, 12. Hmm. 2014, 13, 2008. Yeah, I need that number again. But let's investigate this box that's already out. Nope. Okay, maybe we're just supposed to click on them all. Not this one either. I know that's not it. I'm scared I'm gonna do this wrong and I'm gonna like basically run out of time, but I forgot what exactly the full number she gave was. Do I have like any way to view that? No, not really. Search the archive for information. I mean, it's not going to be there. Okay, so I'm guessing I've just got to check them all. And I just hope that, like, nope. I don't have a certain amount of checks. Not this one either. 
No, that's not it. You finding anything? Nope. Uh, she's, she's like saying stuff like I'm doing this wrong, like I'm gonna potentially run out of time. Um. Not this one either. Uh, where's the damn box? Well. It'd be easier with you here. About that file number? Huh. What was that reference number again? 05R68653. 05R68. 05R68. Well, it's not any of those. 05R68. Yes, it's you. Here we go. There we go. Oof. Hope I didn't screw this up by just kind of running along and doing trial and error. Because you couldn't just ask Allison to remind you of the reference number. You had to like mess up and if she told you. Notified by my partner, Officer Christian Holt of accident at 12 Cannery Road, Dallas Crossing. White female identifies Marianne Ronan. Falling over deck into lake. Audio recorded tape. Holt and I arrive on scene, briefed by patrol officer Jay Chan of incident. Located witnesses, minor's name redacted, Ronan and minor's name redacted, Ronan. Children of Marianne Ronan couldn't get a statement from them as they were under dire stress and shock. The children were taken under care of patrol officer Jay Chan Brown. Coroner investigator T. Dickens arrived at scene, rolled prints of victim, crime lab at scene, completed photographs of scene and recovered an unlicensed wrestler 3121 shotgun. Bullets recovered fr from location barn. Okay. Well, so far I'm not seeing anything we didn't know already. It does reference some other files and audio recordings though. You might be able to look those up on the computer. Even if our file hasn't been digitized yet, they may already have it in the appendix. Coroner took possession of body, cleared scene. Interviewed children at station stated that after Ronan's hair was cut short by sister Ronan, Marianne Ronan threatened Ronan with a gun. When Ronan fled from her, she pursued a child to the docks. Ronan stabbed Marianne Ronan, who was still threatening the child before falling over into the water. Witnesses state they called 911 shortly after. Canvas crime scene did not recover a pair of scissors claimed by Ronan Brown. Presented the case to DAB Cruz charged Ronan with homicide. Okay. Hmm. Alright, so let's go check out these f audio files, I guess. Let's go ahead and put this bad boy back so we don't get in trouble for breaking into a police archive. Okay. So, computer. I thought we were probably going to use this. Search by keywords. What should I look for? I don't know. Marianne Ronan, March 1st, 2005. Uh, Marianne Ronan, March 1st, 2005. Uh, two case files found as a result of your church. Round. Charge. 24-hour homicide report, victim information, crime summary. Marianne Ronan, personal information and rap sheet. Uh, let's just try searching Marianne Ronan. I need to select one more tag. Okay. But what if I just put that in? No, okay. So you choose files to be found. But I can't do anything with these, really. Like, it just tells me... Oh. Oh, storage. Oh, so that's the crime report, and this is the autopsy report. So 05R61889. Whoops. 05R61. References 05R61889. R61889. This one. There. Okay. Here we go. Marianne Ronan, Caucasian, height 138 pounds. On dock at late side, victim threatened her child with a gun. Child stabbed her with a pair of scissors. Victim subsequently fell into lake. Okay, this music's getting weird. Wow, this is a real detective novel. Brown's quite the wordsmith. He's not a writer, Tyler. 
The victim, Marianne Ronan, 40 year one year old white female, exited her home and entered her garage to start loading a Rasso 31 21 9mm shotgun. Shortly after her child, 11 years old, entered the garage to display a new haircut given by her sis by sister. Ronan, according to witnesses, Ronan's statement when she saw the child's haircut, Marianne became enraged and threatened Ronan with shotgun. Ronan fled the garage towards the lake calling for help. Marianne followed still armed out onto the dock on the southern side of the property. Hearing the noise, witness Ronan also came out of the house towards the dock where she observed under threat from Marianne defend themselves by stabbing mother with a pair of scissors. At that time, both witnesses state M.A. Ronan lost consciousness and fell into the lake. At Dallas Crossing Police Department officer Christian Holt received a phone call from Ronan detailing the incident. Officer Jay Chan was dispatched to the scene. Upon arrival, they set up containment of the scene, began a crime scene log, and started tending to both juveniles. See their statements for further description. Notification of detectives. On March 1st, 2005, Officer Christian Holt notified his partner, Officer Eddie Brown, by telephone of the incident before being dispatched to the scene. Holt and Brown arrived at the scene at 2258 hours. They noted the crime scene was located entirely outdoors. Cannery Road is a secluded road, mostly composed of a few residential cottages. Detectives observed a loaded Rassler shotgun on the dock. No rounds had been discharged. They directed forensic personnel to recover items. Detectives were directed to witnesses. Ronan twins. Witness Ronan stated that she heard screaming while she was upstairs in her bedroom. She ran down the stairs and looked over the kitchen window and saw her sibling and their mother, Marianne, on the docks. Marianne was threatening her child with a gun. Tried to run away, but Marianne threatened that she was going to shoot. According to both witnesses, she stated, I'm going to kill you. Ronan then stabbed Mary Ann with Marianne Ronan then stabbed Marianne Ronan with a pair of scissors trying to escape. Marianne Ronan fell into the water unconscious. Item Rassler, refer to forensic fort for further details. Okay. So we gotta look at the forensic report to get more information about the um uh shotgun. Okay, so Marion Ronan, March 1st. Uh, 05R62. Okay. 05R62. Check out 05R62766. 05R62766. Zero 05R66. No, R62, wasn't it? I think it was R62. R43 905 R62 miscellaneous? No. 5R62. Hmm, I'm not seeing it. Is it this box that's already here? Yep, this is it. R62. This one's already been looked through. And recently they didn't put it back. Have her autopsy report. Okay. She. Yeah. What is it? She drowned. The stab wound was non fatal. What? Uh, then on arrival post drowning. Stab wound, left loin, two to assault sea scissors by daughter. Bloody froth seen in mouth and nose, cerebral edema, waterlogged lungs, pulmonary edema, and emphysema aquosum. Distended stomach to which the fluid content. Clean stab wound. Whoops. Fluid and paranasal sinuses, trachea, evidence of fresh water inhalation, other conditions uh, contributing but not related to the immediate cause of death, homicide, if other than known causes. How did injury occur? With scissors, victim then fell over dock into freezing lake water. Was operation uh, performed? No. Organ procurement. Witnesses to autopsy, Eddie Brown, evidence recovered at autopsy, null. 15 centimeter stab wound, death by drowning. Prior examination reviewed by DME, body tag, medical record. Okay, okay, and that's just a bunch of stuff about what organs they recovered and stuff. Shit, 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 shit. Eddie's coming up the stairs. What do I do? What do I do? Um. Stall him. Uh, Sam in the bathroom. Say I went for a smoke. Say I went for a smoke. I did say that. Uh, say I went for a 
smoke. Okay. Um, now what do we need to do? Uh, there's more. So, Ronan Children and Eddie Brown? Facts report. Uh, 0501 calm. 0501 calm. Reference is 0501 COM EBR. 0501. 0501. There we go. You. Gimme, gimme. Okay, here it is. This is the fax receipt, I believe it said. Jesus. Unbelievable. Allie. Tessa called fucking social services on us. And Eddie went along with it. What? Where are you? What's going on? Okay. Recipient, Office of Child Services. Display name, Eddie Brown, Ronan Family Desp Dep Deposition. Delivery successful. Okay, so t Tessa called child services on us and Eddie went with it. <clears throat> Got it. Okay, there must be more information I can get. Um, so we tried Marianne, Ronan Children. Court order. 05R63325. I need to check out 05. R63 325 05 R63 05 R63 This is interesting. I'm, I'm very into this. I'm not really saying much right now because I'm just like I don't know. I'm invested. <laughs> I'm really invested. <laughs> I'm quite interested in what's going on here. Well, that's a picture I definitely don't want to keep. Okay, so order for temporary detention, Superior Court for the State of Alaska. Under 18 years of age, having found probable cause to support the pending petition or the minor having been determined delinquent or invalidation of a probation conduct agreement, the court finds by a pre-ordinance of the evidence that detention or placement outside the home of a parent or guardian is necessary to protect the minor or others. It is ordered that the minor is committed to custody of the Division of Juvenile Justice for detention in a locked or secure facility such as Fireweed Residential Center for Troubled Youth. DJJ has discretion to release the minor without further court order. The above is supported by the oral findings entered on record and contained on the clerk notes or as other resonated below. Recommended on 31805 Superior Courtmaster A. Benjamin, Superior Court Judge Erica Wright. I certify that on a copy of this order was sent to... Placement or detention? Okay. So that's just about how Tyler got put in fireweed. I'm glad that has the, it skips the cutscene of them of him uh, putting him back. Okay, so we've done Marianne and Ronan children. That's nothing. Ronan children, Eddie Brown. Nothing. Ronan children, March. Audio recording. Here we go. Crossing Police Department. Hello. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. It's my mom. She she fell in the water and she's not coming up. Okay, where are you now? Home. Where? Home. Are you alone? Where's your dad? It's just me and my sister. All right, honey, can you give me your address? 12 Cannery Road. Please, hurry. Just stay right where you are, okay? We're sending someone out to help you. Don't hang up. Okay, so that was Ronan Children and March 1st, they gave me that. Child Service? Hospital Discharge. Hospital Discharge Papers Release Form Ronan. 05R68 Miscellaneous. Whoops. I keep pressing escape to try and... References 05R68 MISC. Yeah, that one was over here, right? Yep. There. Wow, there's a lot for us to examine in here. She's uh, Allison's doing a really good job of stalling. Why is that here? Um, Ronan. Diagnosis: concussion. Description of symptoms: pressure in the head, headache, loss of consciousness, nausea, daze. So release. I, Tessa Vecchi, hereby release St. Meadow Clinic from liability following the patient as per terms of this release agreement. I have read and understand the hospital release form, patient signature, hospital stamp. Last name Ronan. Why is Tessa the one releasing us? I'm guessing maybe she had custody after 
for us afterwards or something? Okay. Well, back over to the computer. There must be more we can find. Tessa's name came up. Search for her? Yeah. So let's keep searching though. That was how I got that. Recording. Marianne Ronan recording. Whoops. Marianne Ronan and recording does nothing. Children. Incident report. 2005, 2015, 46. Thomas Vecchi theft report and child neglect report. 2005, 2015. I need to check out. 2005, 2015-2016. Is that what she said? 2005... see 2000 no okay so it must be one of the ones over here i think it was this one right there 210 no that's not it this one then okay here it is yeah all right more information wait what the hell has it accused her of child neglect oh type theft tracking number store shoplifting associate persons oh street death crossing person reported Marianne Ronan on 1305 at approximately 1045 hours Marianne Ronan entered Vinnie Vecchi Vetti Vecchi owned by Thomas and Thomas and Tessa Vecchi Miss Vecchi stated that she observed Ronan browse the aisles for approximately 10 minutes while chatting distractively with her Miss Vecchi stated she was behind the cash register and not have a direct eye contact Vecchi stated that after those 10 minutes, Ronan asked Vecchi if she had any organic mosquito incense in stock. Vecchi informed Ronan that she did not, but stated she believed this demand was odd due to the winter season. Ronan then left without purchasing anything else. Vecchi stated that after approximately 5 minutes, she walked back through the aisle where Ronan had been and discovered a missing box of detergent. Vecchi states that she had been she had very recently restocked the shelves and no one else had been in the store that morning. Vecchi stated she had suspected Ronan of shopping before in the past, notably while in the company and possibility with the aid of Ronan's two children. Becky stated she also had reason to suspect Ronan to be guilty of child neglect. They don't eat and are exposed to all kinds of inappropriate influences. Becky believed it was possible some form of abuse may be occurring at home. Wow, Tessa was really, really getting into our business, huh? Accusing our mom of child neglect and stuff? I need to get moving. Okay, so that's it? Shit. Yeah, that's everything. I'm sorry, Tyler. I couldn't stop him. He's coming your way. Hide. Get out. Uncle, I... We didn't mean I'm to... I'm not gonna repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I said move it! H hey! Get off me! You'd rather spend the night here? Come on! I said don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky your family. Let's talk in private. You're right. Family. And for Allison's sake, we should talk. About what? We saw our file. We know about social services. Why? Why did you turn your back on her? Why did Tessa? Okay. Yeah. You're right. We need to talk. Mm, so maybe that's why Marianne had the gun? Because she didn't want her kids taken away by social services? <clears throat> mm. The winter before your mother's death was... hard. Devil's Crossing was snowed in for months. Most roads were closed, and plane supplies were scarce. Everyone was struggling. Especially Marianne. Yeah. She was always just scraping by. And that winter left nothing to scrape up. Even if locals had found time to help her. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure your mother would have accepted. 
So Tessa came to you. You're saying Tessa recorded our mother because she was having supply issues? Tessa came to me because she was honestly concerned. <laughs> right. I was legally required to report Tessa's complaint, even if I didn't agree. Tessa stabbed her in the back. A snake? Pretending to care? To be her friend? Just to stab her in the back when she was down? Tessa helped out your family for years. I'm convinced her concern was real. Of course you would. Just following the law then. Right. Is that why you came over that day, before she died? You felt shitty, didn't you? That's why you broke procedure? I had to warn her that it was happening and that it wasn't looking good. An assessment worker had been assigned and started doing background checks. What else was I supposed to do? I thought always telling each other the truth was our number one rule. Still is, little moose. And yet you still lied. I didn't want you two putting yourselves through unnecessary hurt. But you're adults and that was your choice to make. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Thank you, Uncle. Just like that, huh? Just like that, huh? Must be nice to have a daughter who lets you off the hook that easy. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but... You have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past ten years what I could have done different. I know I made a big mistake with you two here. And you've got every right to be angry. Being a father, well, it's a pretty tough job. I've tried my best. And I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. We could get there with time. I'm open to getting there. But it's gonna take some time before we're a big, happy family. I respect that. It's hard work rebuilding trust. But you've got a place here whenever you need it. Group hug? Uh, no. Absolutely not. Yeah, don't push it, Eddie. I was already pretty nice to you. We didn't have to forgive you. <laughs> Alright, I'm really gonna have to kick you out now. No rest for the wicked, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Them as wicked as it gets. I'll see you both later. Alright. I guess this looks like a good spot to go ahead and end this off. We... Did some pretty big things there, wrapped up a lot of things, finally got the truth out of Eddie, and I guess maybe we'll be asking, well, we'll go investigate Tessa a bit more now, and it seems like maybe the hunter is social services trying to take her children. Maybe that's why she was like, don't go into the woods because social services will take you, and things like that. Maybe, maybe social services was the hunter, that's what I'm starting to think. So, hmm. That, that particular little segment gave me a lot to think about, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Tell Me Why, and I will see you next time.